Small and unassuming in appearance, the honey badger is nevertheless infamous in the wild for being completely fearless. It readily confronts venomous snakes, hyenas, and animals many times stronger than itself, with images of honey badgers attacking snakes spreading across the internet as a symbol of sheer grit and defiance. This has sparked a provocative question. If honey badgers aren't afraid of snakes, could they take on a Burmese python? From there, an animal that has never lived in Florida and does not belong to the Everglades ecosystem at all, suddenly began to be mentioned as a potential solution at a time when Burmese pythons have been invading South Florida, USA for decades. So what would really happen if the Burmese python and the honey badger, two species with no natural connection, were suddenly placed into the same ecological story? Today, join Terran Works as we uncover the truth behind one of the most controversial rumors ever to emerge from the Everglades. Let's get started. The Burmese python was never meant to be part of Florida. It did not arrive through natural ecological corridors, but through the glass cages of the exotic pet trade. Beginning in the 1970s, these giant snakes were imported into the United States as exotic pets. When young, they appeared harmless, easy to handle, neatly contained inside aquarium tanks at pet stores. Few imagined that these snakes could one day become a serious problem. But pythons never stop growing. As adults, they can reach lengths of 5 to 6 meters and weigh more than 90 kilograms. Many owners soon realized they had taken on more than they could manage. Some released their snakes into the wild. Others lost them during major storms. By the early 1990s, Burmese pythons began appearing sporadically across South Florida. At first, these sightings raised little concern. The Everglades were vast. The snakes were seen as isolated individuals, unlikely to cause any significant impact. But over time, reports increased. The pythons did not disappear. They multiplied, adapted, and quietly took over the wetlands. Only then did it become clear. This was no minor incident, but the beginning of a long-term ecological disaster. If the presence of Burmese pythons in Florida was once dismissed as a series of isolated incidents, the year 1992 changed that perception entirely. In August of that year, Hurricane Andrew tore through South Florida with unprecedented force. Homes were flattened, infrastructure collapsed, and amid the chaos, numerous reptile facilities were completely destroyed. Hundreds of pythons escaped at the same time, spilling into the wild with no remaining barriers to stop them. Biologists would later refer to this moment as the point of no return. Not because pythons appeared for the first time, but because from that moment on, they were no longer scattered individuals. Their numbers had become large enough to survive, reproduce, and expand their range. At the time, the Everglades was like a door left wide open. A warm year-round climate, dense vegetation, an intricate network of waterways, and an abundance of prey created an almost ideal environment. More importantly, this ecosystem had never evolved to contend with a giant snake of this kind. With no natural predators capable of keeping them in check, the Burmese python population exploded in silence over the decades that followed. No noise, no clear warning signs. Only when ecological voids began to emerge did people realize that the disaster had truly begun. By the early 2000s, the first signs of ecological imbalance began to surface. Researchers returned to areas of the Everglades once considered rich with life and noticed something deeply unsettling. Trails that had long been filled with raccoon tracks were suddenly empty. Marsh rabbits were nowhere to be seen. Bobcats, once familiar predators, had nearly vanished from many survey sites. Subsequent studies by the U.S. Mott Geological Survey confirmed what many had already begun to suspect. In regions where Burmese pythons were most abundant, raccoon populations declined by as much as 99%, opossums by around 98%, and several small mammal species disappeared entirely. This was not a localized decline, 
it was a widespread collapse. Burmese pythons are not selective hunters. They consume anything they can overpower and swallow whole. Birds, deer, turtles, juvenile alligators, and even other predators. When a species sits at the top of the food chain without any natural rivals, its impact cascades through the entire ecosystem. Animals vanish first, followed by changes in vegetation, habitat structure, and the natural flow of energy. The Everglades did not collapse in a single dramatic shock. It weakened slowly, silently, until the ecological voids could no longer be ignored. Faced with the increasingly visible ecological voids in the Everglades, Florida was forced to act. The state rolled out a series of measures aimed at containing the spread of the Burmese python. Bounty hunting programs were expanded, placing humans on the front line of the fight. Events such as the Python Challenge drew thousands of hunters, wildlife officers, and volunteers into the swamps, where they tracked, captured, and killed pythons by hand or with rudimentary tools. These were not remote operations, but direct confrontations in a dangerous environment. Each python removed had to be found, subdued, and dealt with on the spot. At the same time, Technology was brought into the battle as a support layer behind the scenes. GPS tracking, drones, infrared cameras, and environmental DNA analysis helped narrow down search areas, monitor movements, and guide people to the pythons' hiding places. As a result, thousands of pythons are removed from the wild each year. But those numbers quickly revealed their limits. Burmese pythons reproduce at a pace humans cannot match. A single female can lay nearly 100 eggs in one breeding cycle, and most of those nests are hidden deep within dense wetlands, far beyond easy human reach. While Florida continues to struggle with controlling Burmese pythons, a completely different image has been quietly spreading across social media. It is the honey badger, a small mammal native mainly to Africa, the Middle East, and parts of South Asia, with no ecological connection to the Everglades or North America. Yet in just a few short years, its name has escaped the boundaries of academic biology and become a global phenomenon, familiar to millions of people worldwide. Videos capturing honey badgers confronting cobras, being bitten, collapsing, then getting back up and continuing the attack have drawn tens of millions of views. Some clips show them driving hyenas away from carcasses, Others depict honey badgers recklessly raiding beehives, enduring hundreds of stings to steal honey. In a few rare scenes, they even face lions or leopards without fleeing. On the internet, the honey badger quickly earned a dramatic nickname, the animal that fears nothing. That reputation does not come from size or brute strength. Honey badgers weigh only a few dozen kilograms at most, with short, stocky bodies that hardly resemble an apex predator. What captivates people lies in their attitude. Honey badgers rarely retreat. When threatened, their instinct is not to run, but to turn and fight back. Their bodies are protected by thick, loose skin that allows them to twist even when caught in a predator's jaws. Powerful jaws, sharp claws, and a high tolerance for pain make them unpredictable opponents in brief, violent encounters. In the wild, honey badgers are solitary, intelligent, and extremely adaptable. They dig burrows, open locks, climb fences, and are regarded by researchers as among the best problem solvers within the mustelid family. This combination of fearlessness, resilience, and sheer unmanageability has transformed the honey badger in the public imagination into a symbol of defiance. And it is from this point against the backdrop of Florida's deadlock with Burmese pythons that a question began to circulate in whispers. If honey badgers are not afraid of snakes, could they confront something even larger, a python? At first, the question existed only as an internet joke, surfacing in comment sections, memes, and debates driven more by entertainment than by science. But as time passed, and as conventional control measures repeatedly revealed their limitations, the tone surrounding that question began to shift. It was no longer just a humorous idea. It became a recurring hypothesis. 
Not in official reports, but in side conversations, where prolonged stalemate made people willing to consider possibilities once dismissed outright. Two species from different continents, shaped by entirely unrelated evolutionary pressures, never meant to share the same habitat, suddenly found themselves linked in a single ecological narrative. Not because they had any natural connection, but because when humans confront a crisis slipping beyond control, they begin searching for an exit, no matter how fragile that possibility may be. When honey badgers are taken out of viral internet clips and examined through real field data, the story changes quickly. Science does not support the idea of the honey badger as a snake-killing machine. In the wild, snakes make up less than a quarter of their diet. Most of the time, honey badgers choose prey that is easier to obtain. Bird eggs, small mammals, amphibians, insects, and even carrion. Confrontations with venomous snakes represent only a small fraction of their behavior, and usually occur when other options are limited. Their resistance to venom is also widely misunderstood. Honey badgers are not completely immune. After being bitten, they can lose consciousness for several minutes, sometimes even hours, and survive only because of their body's rapid recovery. This is a biological advantage, but it is far from miraculous. More importantly, honey badgers are omnivorous, powerful diggers, and extremely difficult to control. In a fragile environment like the Everglades, they would not only hunt pythons, they would prey on whatever is most accessible, from turtle eggs and ground nesting birds to amphibians and small mammals. In that scenario, the much hoped for solution could easily become a new source of pressure pushing an already stressed ecosystem closer to its breaking point. The idea of using one species to control another is not new. Throughout ecological history, it has repeatedly surfaced whenever humans find themselves at an impasse. And almost every time, the outcome has produced consequences that last far longer than originally anticipated. The cane toad in Australia is a classic example. Introduced to control pests in sugarcane fields, the species quickly escaped human control, poisoned native wildlife, and became a biological disaster that has persisted for decades. What these stories have in common is not the animals themselves, but the way humans approach the problem. When an ecosystem has already been disrupted, the instinctive response is to search for a solution that is strong, fast, and seemingly logical. One invasive species appears, so another is introduced to counter it. In theory, this looks like a simple balancing act, but nature does not operate through such clean opposing pairs. Every introduced species brings its own behaviors, needs, and impacts, often extending far beyond what humans can predict. In that context, the idea of the honey badger is not merely a biological hypothesis, but a focal point of controversy, caught between the desire for control and the fear of repeating old mistakes. Today, Florida stands as one of the fastest growing states in the United States. Coastal cities continue to expand. New residential developments rise along the edges of forests. Tourism, real estate, and modern infrastructure give South Florida an image of energy and prosperity. For many people, the Everglades is little more than a green strip at the edge of the map a national park tucked behind highways and resort complexes. Yet behind that modern facade, a quiet conflict is still unfolding. Burmese pythons continue to survive and spread through wetlands that urban development has not yet reached. Florida no longer speaks in terms of eradicating the species. Instead, a more cautious concept has taken hold, control. Python hunting programs continue, Professional removal teams remain active. New technologies are still being tested, but even those directly involved understand that this is not a campaign with a clear end in sight. The Everglades today exists alongside human expansion, an ancient ecosystem forced to adapt to a threat that never appeared in its evolutionary history. Florida moves steadily forward, and the battle with the Burmese python continues quietly in the background. The story of Burmese pythons and honey badgers is not just about two animal species, 
It reflects the way humans confront the consequences of their own actions. A decision that once seemed harmless can end up redirecting an entire ecosystem. Whether honey badgers will ever truly appear in the Everglades or remain nothing more than a rumor, the fact that the idea has spread so widely reveals a deeper truth. Florida is trapped in a crisis with no definitive solution. Can humans learn to live alongside the disasters they have created? Or will they continue to pay the price for each new intervention? What do you think about this story? Leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to continue exploring future journeys with Terran Works.